Hey guys, Teflex. So this video is a follow-up to my last video where I talked about if the PS5 is actually worth the upgrade from the PS4 Pro, especially if you don't have a TV that supports 4K at up to 120 frames per second. So I finally got the Samsung Q70, which supports 4K at up to 120 frames per second, connected to my PS5. And here are my thoughts on the PS5. First of all, let's talk about the design. Sony made the PS5 unique with a white and black tower looking design which can be placed vertically or horizontally. I placed mine vertically because, no, it looks dope. The only thing I would say is that the black plastic at the center of the PS5 is like a dust and fingerprint magnet and this is because of the glossy finish. But apart from that, the design is actually dope. Now, as for the PS5 controller, the overall shape still remains the same as old generation controllers, but there are a few changes to the body like the white and black color, and if you look closely at the body of the controller, there are triangle, box, X and O imprinted on it. A very small detail that makes a very big difference. And what I love most about the controller is that it charges with USB-C. Finally, thank you Sony. I really love any accessories that charges with USB-C, it makes my life better. Now, the only thing I would say I don't really like about the controller is that, like everything that is white, the controller gets stained easily. So if you are the type of person that snipe while gaming, it's gonna be a hot mess after a few seconds. So get prepared to wipe your controller every single day. The back of mine has already turned brown and I try to wipe it down more often. Now let's go straight to the interface. What I love most about the interface is that it's simple, clean and easy to navigate. To power off the PS5 is no longer a 3 second press on the PS button like the PS4 Pro, it's now a single press which pulls down a menu for different tasks like checking your controller battery level, checking your downloads, notification, switching between games and power off or put your PS5 into sleep mode. I noticed that right away. Now let's go to the settings, I just want to talk about a few things that you need to be aware of if you own or plan to get the PS5. Now the first one is screen and output. This is where you are able to check your TV output like the resolution, frame rate and if your TV or your monitor supports HDR. Now a lot of 2K or 1080p monitors that support 144 frames per second or higher are not fully supported on the PS5. Why? I don't know but I really wish it does because it would have saved me a lot of money. Because if my monitor right there supports at least 1080p 120 frames per second, I wouldn't have gotten this TV and that would have saved me like, I don't know, how much did I get this TV? $3,000 or something like that. That would have saved me a lot of money. I mean, I didn't have to get this, this size, but at least it would have saved me a lot of money. I really wish Sony fixed that issue because a lot of gamers right now have 1080p or 2K monitors with high frame rate, so it will be better if the PS5 support at least 1080p 120 frames per second or 2k 120 frames per second that would be so much great like really really great but right now it's not fully supported on the ps5 if you have a monitor that's 144hz or 1080p with very high refresh rate because i know a lot of monitors that are 1080p that support 240 fps even 300 fps and all that stuff but your, the PS5 doesn't recognize those kind of monitors. It's only going to be capped at 1080p, 60 frames per second. But if you are fine with that, then no problem. But it wouldn't make sense to come from the PS4 Pro, which was capped at 60 frames per second, just to end up on the PS5 and play games at 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's pretty much, I don't know, it's really up to you. But right now, it doesn't really make any sense. Now, the other settings I want to talk about is game data and presets, specifically presets. Now, the PS5 can be put into two different modes, performance mode and resolution mode. In performance mode, the PS5 prioritizes frame rate over screen resolution, and in resolution mode, like the name implies, it prioritizes resolution over frame rate. Both of them has their purpose, and we'll talk more about it when we talk about gameplay. But remember, whatever settings you choose here is going to be the default settings for whatever games you launch after. If you launch a game like Call of Duty that supports 120Hz or 120 frames per second and your PS5 is in resolution mode, you can't activate 120Hz in the game settings, not in the PS5 settings, in the game settings. Now resolution mode activates ray tracing while performance mode activates 120 frames per second. So if you play a game like Call of Duty Cold War with the PS5 in resolution mode, you can only play around with ray tracing settings. To activate 120Hz, you have to go back to the main PS5 settings change it there, restart the game and then you're gonna see the option for 120 frames per second in the game settings. I wish there was like a way to override like the PS5 settings in the game settings but right now I don't think that's possible. Now as for the gaming experience, wow, there is a massive difference in speed thanks to the new SSD instead of HDD on the PS4 Pro. This allows the game to launch faster, transition in between worlds easily. Basically, the entire system is really fast and is actually noticeable. To get the best graphics out of the PS5, it has to be in resolution mode with ray tracing turned on. 
Ray tracing is a feature that adds more realism to games like shadows, reflection, basically the game follows the principle of light. And to fully experience this, let's try a game like Spider-Man Miles Morales. I mean, this game is actually stunning, I haven't started playing the game yet but the graphics look so so good. Yeah, but the thing is that how much of these details will you notice while in action in the game? For example, if you're playing Spider-Man Miles Morales and you're swinging, 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 how much time do you get to like check if your character's reflection is properly exposed or something like that? Um, no, you can't really tell the difference. The only time it makes a very big difference is if you take a step back, walk slowly and check for your details like, okay, is my reflection here good? Is my reflection here good? But while in action in a game, for example, if you're playing Call of Duty Cold War, trust me, you don't have time to check if your character's reflection is properly exposed in the mirror or something like that. You're gonna get sniped like gone you're gone already so that's why i prefer to put my ps5 in performance mode the graphics in performance mode is not as good as the graphics in resolution mode but when you're in action you can't really tell the difference because you don't have time to check for little details if your clothes is reflecting the light properly or something like that is you don't really have time for that and that's why my ps5 is in resolution mode because it doesn't really really make a very massive difference like for example let's put resolution mode and performance mode side by side let's see if you notice a massive difference in the graphics so like i said while you're in action you can't really tell the difference between performance mode and resolution mode graphic wise frame rate wise you're gonna tell the difference because there's there's kind of a massive difference between not kind of a massive difference there's a massive difference between 120 frames a second and 60 frames a second although there i know some people that can still tell the difference between 60 frames a second and 120 frames a second i mean it took me a while to notice a massive difference but i know there are still people like that that can't tell the difference but there are some games that are suited for resolution mode not all games support 120 frames a second i mean these are games that don't require split second reaction like ratchet and clank or astro playroom or something like i don't play those kind of games but if you play those kind of game, resolution mode is going to be the best mode to put your PS5 in. Now, let's talk about playing old games on the PS5. I'm talking about PS4 games, PS3 games, and even PS2 games. I was kind of expecting a boost in the graphics department since the PS5 has a new processor and GPU, but it's still kind of the same. I tried playing a PS2 game like Jack 3 and it kind of looks horrible. I was expecting the PS5 to like add some boost to the graphics and make the graphics look better than what it was on the PS4 Pro but mm, no and that is kind of disappointing a little because i know a lot of people that uses the ps5 still play ps4 games now a review of the ps5 won't be complete without talking about the trigger buttons on the playstation 5 controller this feature along with 120 hz are the main selling points of the ps5 and are probably the main upgrade from the playstation 4 pro this feature is actually dope but i didn't turn it on on my ps5 and i'm going to explain why basically what the trigger button does is that it gives the user some kind of feel to the activities in the game being played like in a shooting game, different gun has different kind of resistance and vibration. In a game that uses bow and arrow, you feel some kind of resistance on the R2 as you pull down on the bow. This feature is actually great but I find it to like reduce my skills a little bit, at least in the type of games that I play, which are shooting games. Turning on the trigger buttons in a multiplayer game is the biggest mistake you can make. It just doesn't sit right. I like the fact it's there but no thanks. Now what I love most about the PS5 is that it's actually very silent. This is actually a massive upgrade from the PS4 Pro because if you guys still use a PS4 Pro or remember when you were using the PS4 Pro, the PS4 Pro after like 2-3 hours the fan sound just kicks up but the PS5 is actually silent. I mean occasionally the fan boosts up then it goes down that's pretty kind of normal but the ps5 is pretty silent and i love it for that now even with all the 4k 120 frames a second hdr is the ps5 actually worth the upgrade from the ps4 pro for me the answer to that is yes but not so much in fact right now apart from the fact that it's almost impossible to get a ps5 i wouldn't recommend it for the next one plus years and here's why there is not a lot of game that takes advantage of the 120 hz and if you are the type of person that can't tell the difference between 60 hz and 120 hz, don't even bother to get a PS5 because I know a lot of people can't and even I struggle sometimes to get it. And also, 99% of the games that have been released since the PS5 still works great on the PS4 Pro. It's, it's really up to you. Maybe in the next one year, the upgrade is going to start to make a massive difference from the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Pro is obviously going to get older. But right now, I mean, the upgrade are there but there is not a lot of games to take advantage of it. Anyways, that's my review of the PlayStation 5. I really appreciate you guys for taking your time to watch my video. It's been your boy Eleven, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.